So at this point for our carbohydrates notes, you have some of the basic information, the foundational need, information that you need, such as the monosaccharides or the monomers. The elements um, that make up carbohydrates are carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in a one-to-one -one ratio. The type of bond is glycosidic, and the function of the carbohydrates are fast energy, number one. Number two, that's structural support, and we'll talk about that when we go into detail about cellulose. Uh, three, identification, and we'll talk about that in unit two when we're looking at the plasma membrane. So examples of carbohydrates are glucose, ribose, and cellulose. And the key thing about carbohydrates is that you can easily identify them with their suffix um, OS, O-S-E. This is not the case for all carbohydrates. There are some exceptions. We're going to talk about chitin, and we're going to talk about starch. Um, but most of the times you can identify a carbohydrate with that suffix, that ending of O-S-E. Carbohydrates will form um, rings when they are in aqueous solution, and this is what we're going to be focusing on um, for AP biology because we are looking at carbohydrates as they function in living cells, and living cells are made mostly of water. So the rings that we're going to be looking at focus, uh, or, or the focus for, the, the, the structural focus for our carbohydrates. One of the most important things you're going to need to understand about this class is that we're always going to talk about how structure affects the function of these polymers, these, these uh, macromolecules. And this is certainly the case in carbohydrates. So in order to understand what some of their functions look like, or their structures look like to, to um, to understand how they function differently, we're going to look at a couple of key examples. And the first one that I want to talk to you guys about is glucose. So glucose is uh, C6H12O6. It is what we call um, one of our monosaccharides. And there are several different shapes that this uh, molecule can take. So the way that we draw these carbohydrates, um, we are going to draw them in their ring structure, and there's some conventions that I want you guys to be familiar with. So first of all, because glucose has six carbon, it is known as a hexose, hex meaning six. So we're going to draw this ringed glucose, and there's three variations that we're going to be doing. We're going to start off with an oxygen, and from this oxygen, what we're going to be drawing is a hexagon shape. Now. At every corner of this hexagon, there is understood to be a carbon. So this is carbon number one, carbon number two, number three, number four, and number five. Carbon number six for our hexose comes off carbon number five, and we're just going to draw a little C there. Now this is the simplified version of this uh, the simplified drawing of this molecule. There are 12 hydrogens and six oxygens. One of the things, or one of the tricks I've found that has helped students in the past is if we clear away all the clutter and focus on what makes each of the three types of glucose different from each other. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and draw three more glucose molecules. Okay, and what we're going to be doing, they're all numbered the same. So this is carbon number one, carbon number one, two, three, four, five, and then that is carbon number six. What I'm going to do here now is show you guys how the structure of these, mon these monosaccharides, even though they have the same chemical formula, the orientation in space of their side groups is going to make each of them behave differently. So we're going to start with this first one, and this one we're going to draw as alpha glucose. So alpha is just that little um, Greek letter, lowercase alpha. And what makes alpha glucose different or structurally unique is the position of an OH group within the molecule itself. So remember that carbon can form four bonds. This is very important in understanding why carbon 
is the basis for organic life on earth. Carbon can form up to four bonds. We're not going to draw all four bonds for each of these carbon molecules. It's going to get too cluttered. Instead, what I want you guys to look at is whenever um, you're looking at a, a hexose, what you want to do is turn your eyes to carbon number one and carbon number four. That's what you want to look for. That's what's going to make this one different from this one and different from this one. If it is alpha glucose, then the drawing in this two-dimensional drawing is going to represent the, these two OH groups oriented in space in a particular direction. And so if you see the OH group drawn pointing downwards, so this is the H pointing upwards, what you want to look for is that OH group. If on carbon number one and carbon number four, the OH group is pointing down, then this is alpha glucose. So again, you're looking at carbon number one and carbon number four in which way the drawing is showing those OH groups, those hydroxyl groups. If it is beta glucose, if it is beta glucose, what you're going to look for is that carbon number one, the OH group, is, has been drawn pointing upwards towards the top of the page. And the OH group on carbon number four is pointing down. Lastly, we have galactose. And on galactose, the carbon uh, the OH group at carbon number one and four are both pointing upwards. That is the way that they will be drawn. And it may not seem like it's that big a difference, but when you start looking at the structural differences between long chains of alpha, glu of alpha glucose and long chains of beta glucose, it's the difference between something we can digest and food and nutrients for our body versus something we can't digest and even if you ate it, you would starve to death because you can't break this down. So the structure is incredibly important and that's gonna be the focus of the critical thinking questions for these macromolecules. So let's take a look at um, this alpha glucose as it's an example of looking at how dehydration synthesis brings these molecules together. So we have our individual monomer. There is my six carbon, and again, remember, each of these points represents a carbon. So carbon number one, two, three, four, five, and then there's carbon number six. I'm going to draw this as alpha glucose, which means I have an OH group and an OH group at carbon number one and four, and they're both drawn pointing down towards the bottom of the page. I'm going to take a second alpha glucose. Carbon number one, two, three, four, five, six. Here's my OH group. Here's my OH group. And what's very important is that you guys understand how these two molecules will come together and form a polymer. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this right here. We're going to take an OH and an H group and remove it in a process that's called dehydration synthesis. We are removing water. HOH or H2O is water dehydration synthesis, what is left behind when we draw this are two alpha glucoses that are sharing this oxygen right here. So once we removed the HOH, that oxygen right there is the one that's going to be shared between these two molecules. And this right here is your glycosidic bond. And we can keep adding over and over and over to form what we call polysaccharides, each time removing water to form that glycosidic bond. 
if this molecule is a string of alpha glucoses, of three or more alpha glucoses, we refer to that as starch. This is, uh, starch is highly branched. A simplified form, a very straight lung, is called, uh, lung chain is called amylose. Once you begin to branch the, um, once you begin to branch the molecule, it becomes starch and or, depending on whether or not it's an animal or it's in a, uh, in a plant, you could also refer to it as glycogen. In either case, all three of these are the same basic molecule, which is three or more alpha glucoses. If there are three or more beta glucoses, this is referred to as cellulose. In common speak, fiber. And this is not digestible to, by people. There has, uh, in fact, mammals cannot digest fiber uh, or, or cellulose. Instead, what happens is uh, cows, deer, and other herbivores have a symbiotic relationship with bacteria that will break it down for them. One more example of how structure affects function in the carbohydrates is seen in the difference between uh, ribose and deoxyribose. Now, ribose and deoxyribose are part of our nucleic acids. They are the sugar that makes up DNA and RNA. And structurally, they look very, very similar. Now, ribose and deoxyribose are what are known as pentoses. They have five carbons. So five for pent, like a, pent like a pentagon. Um, and then deoxyribose is also a five carbon. And when we draw them, at first they are going to look very similar. You have the pentagon shape. You have a oxygen, carbon number one, number two, number three, number four, and then carbon number five sticks up from here. And this numbering is very, very, very important. So carbon number one, two, three, four, five, and they look very similar. And remember, I'm not gonna draw all the other groups that are attached. Um, what I'm going to draw is just what, for, what you need to look for that makes them different from each other. So right off the bat, they look very, very similar, but here's what you wanna look for to identify the difference, the structural difference between deoxyribose and ribose. Ribose has one extra oxygen, and it's located here at carbon number two. So we're just gonna draw the little O. Ribose has the oxygen. Deoxyribose has the oxygen removed, and so there is no carbon, um, there's no oxygen there, excuse me. And it's very important that you guys understand the structural differences between these two because then the way they function in our genetic information is going to be different simply because of the presence of that oxygen group right there. This is, or these are the notes for your carbohydrates. If you have any questions, please make sure to stop by during tutorials or email me and I will be glad to help you all. Hope you have a good day, bye-bye.